Hey everybody, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is our very own uh, self-publishing school graduate, one of the most successful students in the program, Lise Cartwright. And I'll give you a little bit of background on Lise. Uh, Lise is a best-selling author and a coach based in Auckland, New Zealand, and she writes her books and her blog for time-poor entrepreneurs and new freelancers looking for actionable information to help them move forward in their business, whether they're just starting out or just need help moving forward and achieving their goals. Now, Lisa, she's got an amazing story, and really the, the numbers speak for themselves. She's been a writing machine, and over the last 10 months, she's gotten 14 books out, all from scratch. We're not talking ghost writers, and also we're not talking crappy, really bad quality books, just pumping them out and not caring. We're talking good books and, and a really engaged community off of these books of people who love them, can't wait to buy the next one and the next one and the next one and who are begging for more. So I think that's been pretty exciting and also built an income of a few grand a month and that's only building. I mean, she's so busy writing right now that it's just put the book out there and she doesn't even spend a ton of time on the marketing portion of it. But that really is as, as you're building an author platform that uh, is 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 the recipe for success up front is really getting in there and I know these books will continue to grow and grow and grow into an even bigger income so I'm really excited to talk with Lise and Lise welcome thank you I know we've been on, I, sound, I sound good <laughs> <laughs> I know we've been on uh, about a thousand of these hangouts but <laughs> so this is this is par for the course but I'm excited to dive down into your story and into how you've been able to do this because mm -hmm. it really is remarkable when you look at the stats here. But before we get into a lot of that and to more of the actionable advice, let's take it back a little bit and take us back to your first book. What was that? What was that like? And, and how was that process? So my very first book was um, a, a guide that I'd written back in 2012 or 2013, I can't remember around how to be a freelance writer on ODS. And I initially just sort of launched it on my website. I didn't put it on Amazon. I'd like Amazon at that stage wasn't even on my radar. Um, and I remember reading a whole bunch of blog posts and stuff like that and people saying, yeah, it's really easy to write a book, put it on your website and you'll sell thousands of copies. It did not happen that way at all. <laughs> so, when I um, sort of stepped back and went, okay, well, how is this? How does this actually work? I probably spent another six months researching and just really trying to figure out how to not only sort of write a book that sells, but also get it into a lot of people. Because at that stage, you know, my blog wasn't very big. I didn't have a huge list. In fact, I I don't even think I had any more than fifty people on that list. So you know, trying to figure out a way to sort of um, get that book into many hands was kind of where I was at um, by the time I came to self-publishing school. Got so, it. And Go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. Did... <laughs> I remember having a conversation with you about that book and I, my idea coming in was that I would revamp that book. And I remember you sort of saying, Lise, I think you should just start from scratch. Like I think that this might, it might be a better process to go through this. And when I ran the numbers and did sort of keyword research on Amazon or specifically on Kindle, no one was really searching for freelance writing or freelance writing on ODES. So for me, that, that was like, well, there's not really a market there. So I decided to shelve that and then do something completely new, not even in a niche that I was writing in or, or anything like that. So. To me, I count the book No Gym Needed as like my first real proper book because I did did all the research and, and went through and did all of that sort of stuff. So No Gym Needed is probably the my yeah, my first real book and the freelance writing guide is probably it, it is, it's more of a guide, um, like a PDF guide than a than a book. So yeah, so that's what I would say would be my first book. Got it. And I, I, I remember this because I remember going through the whole process <laughs> of, of doing this book together and all the all the calls and the positioning and all that, which was a lot of fun. But mm -hmm. take us take us through for the people who don't know about that. What was that process like? And also, what was it like to go into a completely different niche, different industry than what you had even written on before or had previously had experience with? Yeah, I guess 
when I sit down to, you know, because when I, when you said, okay, let's start from scratch, I literally did start from scratch. I had no idea about what I was going to do. I just wrote a whole bunch of ideas down and focused more on the problems that I was facing at that sort of time, you know, because I still wanted to write about something that I kind of knew about because it, I didn't want to have to go through and learn a whole bunch of stuff. I wanted to sort of write from a place where I knew stuff about. And it's not until you start kind of mind mapping and writing stuff, just writing ideas down, that you realise just how much stuff you actually know. And I think that was key for me when I started writing stuff down like that. I was like, oh my, I could write a ton of books about a whole lot of stuff because you have life experience. But, you know, as, as you progress through um, your, the different stages of life, you have life experience. And so that's what I decided to do. Um, that's how I sort of came to know to needed was at the time I was um, struggling to find a way to exercise. I hate the gym. I'm just not a fan and <laughs> yeah um so for me I was just like okay well, I just really struggled trying to find the motivation also to exercise and make it consistent and also make it short because aside from not liking the gym I also don't like to spend hours exercising either so I wanted to find a way to exercise in a short amount of time with maximum results and so that's really how no gym needed came about and I'd Remember, the mind mapping um, exercise for me was the, the biggest um, process that just made things sort of come into, um, I'm trying to find the right words, come into, like I'm a visual person. So actually going through that process of doing the mind mapping, just I could see um, like the chapters developing and I could, I could see the direction mm. start to come out, even though it was a complete jumble of nothing at that time. So that process for me is now something that I do for every single book. I mind map everything out because it gets everything out and then I can start, you know, with colored pens and stuff like that, start drawing and making connections and stuff like that. So that that's what really helped me to be able to write as many books as I have because mind mapping just gets it from here down onto paper. And I physically do it. I don't use those mind mapping um, online tools I find yeah. yeah I find the, the physicality just I just cements it more so much better because you can go you're not limited to a screen into a dock yeah. you, can, you can just start right everywhere on. yeah <laughs> now explain this process what does this mind mapping process look like for you especially for those people who might not even know what mind mapping is yeah so for me it's really just if I start with just an idea so it may not even be a specific niche or anything like that it'll just kind of be an idea that I've had in the sort of back of my mind so I'll write that sort of in the middle of the page and then I'll just jot down everything that comes to my mind about that idea um, and I'll use you know lots of different colors and arrows and I draw bubbles around ideas and you know that's just kind of how it um, it morphs out and then some from that process there I start to group things together and maybe write a little bit more around sort of each idea so that's kind of how I sort of start the process is just starting with an idea maybe even a working title like we had with um what was it no gym workouts which we really loved but <laughs> <laughs> nobody else but did <laughs> yep. no, <I> didn't. <laughs> so yeah so that's how the process really works for me now and that I used to, when I first started, I would probably do that process over sort of two or three days, like kind of let it marinate. Um, and now pretty much if I have what I think is a solid idea, I just, I mind map. I've got about five or six mind maps on my wall of, of books that I haven't written yet just because I find that if I don't get it out, it'll just, it rattles around in here for a while. So <laughs> just doing so the mind map of, out. of clearing it out to yeah. where you say okay when I go back to that idea it's over there that's on that right I, then I can deal with it that's exactly right and expand on it yeah so and how, how do you have so many book ideas where do those come from <laughs> my head <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know I guess whenever I when I sat down and started this process particularly with no gym needed I was always in the mindset of writing books in a series so when I did that book and then I did my next book, Side Hustle Blueprint, I always 
sort of thought about doing them in a series. So I mind mapped an entire series. I have an entire series for No Gym Needed. I have an entire series for Side Hustle Blueprint. And when I say series, I mean like 10 books in each series. So I have a lot of books to write. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, so that, that I just mind mapped them because I, for me it was like, okay, well, it's not really a singular idea. There's some, it's expanse. I didn't want to write, you know, a 500 page book on just that one topic because when I, as a reader, as someone who consumes, I only like to read for two hours, you know, max in any one given time. So I want to consume quickly. So that's how I write my books quick, you know, right, so, so they can be consumed. So your way into a lot of different books. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly uh, right. I think that's pretty common. We see a lot of students is they start with that mind process, mind map process and they think, Hey, I could maybe write five to 10 pages about this topic yeah. I'm thinking about. And then you yeah. get lost in your mind map and then you're like, Whoa, I've got two to three books in your case, 10 books that I could write. I just got to figure out which one to write first. Exactly. That's exactly right. Love so, yeah. that. So you, you were the, in, in your class of self-publishing school, you were the first person to publish yes. rapid implementation. And I know you're <laughs> really proud of that and really gunning for that. So what, why do you think that was like, what was it about you that helped you to get through the, cause like you said, you started from scratch just like yeah. everyone else, but how mm -hmm. did you get through the process so quickly and, and get to publish so quickly? Well, for me, it was about setting a, setting a consistent schedule um, for the writing. So I'm a freelance writer, have been for three plus years now full time. So I had clients, you know, I, I had you know, stuff going on in the day that I had to sort of work around. So I knew for me, the only way that I was going to get this book written was to actually schedule the time in. Like there was no point in me just going, you know, being airy fairy about it and not making a, a actual set time in the calendar. And whether that time moved didn't matter as long as it was in the calendar. So I made a concerted effort to write for at least an hour a day during the week and I took the weekends off. Um, and then I found that the more consistently I did that, my writing came faster. So initially when I first started, I was writing about a thousand words in an hour. By the time I'd finished the book, it was up to 2000 words an hour. I'm like a type fast. So um, I just, and I just found that the words just came out um, faster, just the, the more I did it. So it was just having that consistency. I know that sounds probably really simple, but it really is, it was just about being consistent. Um, and I think I wrote the book in two and a half weeks, three weeks, maybe. Yeah. Got it. That's, that's great. And so what would you say to people that said, Lise, two and a half weeks, there's no way that's a good book. That's too fast. <laughs> uh, I would say go and check out No Gym Needed. It's still number one. <laughs> <laughs> on Amazon. That's oh. what that's what I would say. That's a thirty thousand word book. Well, what about what about just the concept? Because there are a lot of people, and obviously you and I are on the same page on this. But there are a lot of people who think two and a half weeks writing fast equals a crappy book. Like, what would you say to that? Um, well, I just I completely disagree because I don't. I think the key is that you have researched the crap out of it, that you know that there is a market and that you know what you're writing about. So I'm not just writing crappy stuff. Like I made sure that um, that what I was writing made sense. Like I had an editor that went through it. I didn't, like I self-edited and then handed it to somebody else. So I definitely recommend that you do that. I would never not, not edit. I did it once where I didn't have an editor because I was like, I got this, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, no, <laughs> would never ever recommend doing that because the minute someone picks up a mistake, yeah, that's a one-star review there and there. So always use an editor. So I think for me it was, I had the mind map was huge and then I outlined the book before I sat down to start writing it. So I was also consuming inf like consuming information around the book topic at the same time. So where I had gaps, that's where I was kind of reading and learning information that would then transfer into the book. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, d I don't think that just because you write fast that that's necessarily going to mean that it's going to be a crappy product. 
Yeah, I completely agree. And it's this whole concept of immersing yourself in the book. And that's when you actually you use Parkinson's law, which is an object will swell into in proportion to the amount of time you give yourself to complete it. And you use that to your mm -hmm. advantage to get a much better product. Because just like so many published authors, they have a year and a half to write their book. And it all happens in the last three months. But when they're on the deadline, you're just circumventing that process and using yeah. it for your advantage. Now, yeah, I could well, have like 20 books written in a year. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're at 14 in uh, 10 months. So you got to yep. write six, six, <laughs> six more books in the next two months. Which I'll do it. <laughs> done before. Uh, yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk about the seven books in seven weeks challenge later. Yep. Cause that's, that's mind bending. But first I want to, I want to touch in on, so you went from finished book. I can't remember if this was got back from the editor or if this was actually first draft finished. I think it was got back from the editor, but you went from finished book to book on Amazon and it was either seven or nine days. I can't yeah. remember, which was yeah. way faster than most people. How did you do that? So literally instead of getting stuck in the minutiae of launching and overthinking that whole process, because it, it's daunting, like the marketing side of it can be really daunting. I just sort of took the approach. I said, you know what? I don't have a list. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm not going to stress about it. I'm just going to follow the process that you guys had laid out. So I went, you know what? I'm not going to worry about having a long launch or, or anything like that. I just want to ship it. I, I want to get it out there. Um, as you said, done is, is better than perfect. So I really, I took that to heart. So for me, I think by the time I got it back from the editor, I did a read through and I went, okay, well, really, what am I waiting for? Like, I don't, there is no list. Like I just, so I did a really short sort of um, pre-launch list. I think I had 30 people on that list. So I think it was seven days and then I just, I launched it and yeah, the rest is history really. I just, I didn't, I just didn't want to get stuck overthinking that process. So that's why I was just like, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Got like it. ripping a band-aid off. I just was like, let's just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that analogy. And were there fears, were there doubts that you had to overcome? Because like you were just yeah. touching on, like so many people, they get to that published point and they're like, oh, I'll edit for a few more weeks or yeah. the book's finished editing, I'll push it back. Uh, there's a holiday coming up. Um, Memorial Day is a couple weekends before that. And then, you know, um, Christmas is, it's like, there's never the perfect time and people have a million reasons why they aren't launching their book. So yeah. what were those fears that came up and then how did you overcome those? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess once I got it back from the editor, it was just kind of like, okay, well, <laughs> this is, this is like, this is it. And then I remember thinking, holy crap, if I launch this, is anyone going to read it? Like who the hell am I to write a book and especially in the health and fitness industry like you know I'm not a personal trainer um, I know my body but I don't know anybody else's so yeah all that sort of stuff went through my head but at the same time I was also I'm quite self-aware so when it got back from the editor I made a promise to myself that I would only read through it once and if and I trusted the editor so that's the other thing you have to have a, a good relationship if the editor didn't pick it up then I wasn't going to pick it up like that's what I sort of figured I figured done you know done is better than perfect just kept going through my head I had it written above you know I had it, it printed out and above my um, laptop so I just I just kept looking at that and then I just kept doing the tasks so every day I was just like okay put it up on Amazon there you know hit publish get some reviews so I just did having that process kind of mitigated or kind of stopped me from thinking about it too much. I was just like, I'm just going to follow the process and not think about it. Um, I remember going to bed at night with stuff running through my head, but <laughs> every morning when I got up, I would see done is better than perfect and just, and just follow the process. Like for me, it's just, if I have that, a process there, then I just, I just follow it it through and to hell with anything like I because for me I was just kind of like whatever happens happens like I'm, not, I'm just I didn't want to worry about it too much and and in spite of being fearful I just you know I just did it anyway so I don't know I just I'm just kind of that sort of person where I'm just like you know I'll just try and if it doesn't work I adjust like you just tweak yeah. adjust and keep moving forward 
Great. And you, you keep saying the process, the process, the process. Are you talking about the process inside self-publishing school? or Yes, yeah, sorry, I am. <laughs> cool. Your checklist for launching. So I it just I just followed every single step. So I remember saying to you when I came into the course, I was just like, I'm just going to do whatever you tell me. That's all. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not deviating from that. Whatever you tell me, I will do. Like I was ready, you know, when the, what is the saying? When the teach, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yeah. Yeah. I love <laughs> <that>. you, <Bella. laughs> <laughs> now let's, let's move on from that and talk about the book since then. So rapid, rapid implementation. Then the next book came on pretty quickly on the heels mm -hmm. of that one, right? Yep. Two weeks later. <laughs> wow. Because, yeah. So I remember when I started writing No Gym Needed, I had started writing it for both men and women so it was a combined book halfway through the editing process I got stuck like I got stuck with the title and I remember James saying Lise I think you should split it up into male and female I'm like are you freaking kidding me the editor has it <laughs> so, and he was like you know what I think that's the best option forward so I remember emailing um, Anna and going stop <laughs> I need to rework, just stop whatever you've done. So I split the book into two um, and launched the female one first and then did the men's one a couple of weeks later. That's awesome. And and so that one, I, I love how you kind of, you talk about series and you kind mm -hmm. of serialize that in a sense too. And I've, I've, I've given that advice from, from what you did to other people since, which is, mm -hmm. hey, just make a women's version and a men's version. And it mm -hmm. wasn't that difficult to do. Um, so that's no. awesome. And let's move on from that. So the next books, because uh, you, you moved from workout books to totally different. You went, went back to the freelancing side. So you want to yeah. tell us a little bit about, about that and what went into that decision? So the next sort of, um, the next two books that I wrote was under the um, brand Side Hustle Blueprint. So I did Side Hustle Blueprint and then um, one about, you know, how to make money writing books because <laughs> yep. I was making money then. Um, so the reason that I went down that track is because I had a blog around freelancing and how to sort of do that. And a lot of the problems that a lot of people kind of face when they're thinking about freelancing or thinking about making an extra income is it's scary to um, start. And it's also what the heck do you do? Like sitting in an office, you're probably, you, you sort of think to yourself, what skill do I actually have? that I could then monetize, that I could actually convert into something. So that's how Side Hustle Blueprint came about because I was like, okay, it's, I think people need to think outside the square. And I, like, I came up with this massive list of different skills and not necessarily just on, it's not just online. There's loads of things that you can do at, you know, on the side. So not everybody wants to leave their job, but everybody wants to have a little bit of extra money. So. That's kind of how the Side Hustle Blueprint um, series came about. I've got a whole bunch more to sort of write in that. And then after I sort of did those two books, um, I started getting questions directly from my community on my blog around actually the freelancing business side of stuff. So how to actually set up the business, you know, how do you charge clients properly? How do you make sure that you're getting paid correctly? And, you know, how do you make sure you get paid? Um, so I sat down and went, when I was sitting down to sort of do my goals in December for the year ahead, I just thought, what would it look like if I did seven books in seven weeks? Like, wh how would that even work? <laughs> so I, that's what I did. I, I sat down and wrote um, a book a week, basically. Where did, where did that idea come from? <laughs> I remember I jumped, caught a webinar. I think her name is called The Book Ninja, I think is her name. Mm -hmm. And she had um, written something like 28 books in 28 weeks, something crazy like that. And I thought, I'm pretty sure I can't do that. I, I mean, I could, <laughs> but I don't think I'd be overly sane by the end of it. And I just thought I wanted to kickstart off um, 2014, 15, 2015 with a bang. Like I wanted to do something big that would kind of set the tone for myself for the year. So that's why I just went, okay, I'm going to do seven books in seven weeks. Now, <clears throat> I had I did a bit of planning behind that. So I didn't just sit down and go, okay, book one, what will I write? I actually sat down and my mapped the entire series out. Like I had a plan of, of where I wanted to go. And that's how I was able to kind of 
write those books the way that I was because I wrote each book in, in 24 hours, like I did it in two days where I just went through, I had the books semi outlined, you know, so I had the chapters and a, like a brief summary for each one. And then I just, I sat down and wrote and because my blog is all about freelancing, it, it was super easy to do that. Like it, it was just like writing a 10,000 15,000 word blog post real for me. Like it was, that process was easy because it was something that I knew. Um, but I wouldn't recommend writing and launching at the same time. <laughs> so halfway, halfway through the seven books in seven weeks, I stopped trying to launch each book at the same time. I just, I would write, so I wrote and published a book a week, but I, did, and then I went through the process of launching them after the fact, because after about three weeks, I was brain dead and just really, um, struggling with trying to keep on top of everything. So I made the decision sort of halfway through, I just went, you know what, I'm just gonna write and publish, write and publish, write and publish, and not worry about the launch. And that's what I did. Got it, and what was the workload like during those seven weeks? Like, what, what did your yeah. weeks look like? <laughs> Crazy, so I had to carve out the time. So I made, I just cleared the deck every Monday. So all client work I'd either had to have done sort of the, the week previously or I you know I just had to before I started the challenge I got up to speed on wherever where everything's at and then planned out my weeks so that I had an entire day to just write on a Monday um, and then yeah sort of Tuesday Wednesday Thursday it was crazy I remember my husband sort of going what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen you for, you know, because I was literally, because of where, you know, I'm here and my editor is in the state. So she'd be, I mean, it was good because she'd be working through something at night. But if she had a question, you know, it, we had like a crossover where it was morning her time and, and late at night my time. And, you know, I'd be 10 p.m. at night responding to her question and guy would be like, what are you doing? Why are you still on your laptop? I mean, I'm building an empire. <laughs> <laughs> I've got people in the United States <laughs> working for me right now. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Leave me alone. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so it was, yes, yeah, so I was just going to say it was an amazing process, but not one that I would um, recommend you do without a bit of forethought and pre-planning. And what was, how many hours a week would you say you were, you were doing on that? Because you were still doing um, client work, you were still, yeah. I mean, this it's not like you just had nothing else to do. Nothing. No, exactly. Um, so if I think, so if I say that each book took me sort of eight to nine hours to write the first draft, then I had to do a self-edit, hand it off to the editor. So I had a, pro, like I actually had a process written out of the flow. So write the book, self-edit, hand it to the editor, then I knew that I had, and she was great. She turned them around in 24 hours. Um, then I was like, okay, cover design, titling, all that sort of stuff had to happen, um, create a freebie, create a landing page, email opt-ins, all of that sort of stuff was happening. So I probably was doing 20 hours a week for, for the whole book stuff and then 40 hours <laughs> trying to keep up with the client stuff. Got so, it. Yeah, crazy. Wow, that is crazy. And what were what were some of the biggest lessons that you learned out of that seven week challenge? That I can write a book a week. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it was, I was just like, I had the, um, as long as you have a decent outline, you have a checklist of everything that you need to do, you can do it. Like it's, it was just, okay, this, 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 and as long as you don't deviate from that, it's fine. So if I hadn't had any clients, this it, this process would have been a breeze. Like if I didn't have anything else, it, I would have been much less stressed. Um, so I learned that I, and I learned, you know, sort of halfway through that trying to write, publish and launch it, it all in the same week is it's like it's, it is, it's impossible to do well. Like I found that after probably the first two weeks that something would suffer either the launch or the writing and so I made that decision to just not launch them because I wanted to make sure that the writing um, was still quality as I was going through that process so yeah so for me I learned that I work well under pressure like I can meet that sort of a deadline um, but not to 
not to worry about trying to launch kind of all at the same time. And if you are going to do that, you, you have to outsource it. Like you can't do everything yourself well. And now what was one thing you learned from that process that was a surprise that you didn't expect to come out of that? Um, probably I was surprised that I couldn't launch. Like I, to me, I, you know, I was just like, because it's a process. Like, again, I'm very process driven and I was like, I just have to follow a checklist. But there are a lot of moving parts when it goes, when you're writing and then when it's editing and then you're going through a launch process. Like there, are, there's a lot of moving parts. And I just, I learned that I just couldn't do everything myself as much as I'm very much someone that likes to do everything themselves. I learned that I, I have to let go and I have to outsource some of the process otherwise I'm just going to go nuts or it's just not going to happen <laughs> like, I'll just continue writing books and never launching like <laughs> now what did your what did your editor think of all this she was great like she when I, I approached her about what I wanted to because I needed to get a commitment from her to do it so um, when I approached her and said this is what I'm thinking do you, can you, are you on board? Is it going to be okay? And the books weren't 30,000 words. They were on average between um, 12,000 and 15,000 words each. So not huge books. Um, so she said to me, as long as you get them to me Monday night, your time, I can get them back to you by Wednesday morning, my time. So that was the agreement we had and we just, it just worked. Like as, if I missed Towards the end of the seven weeks, I think I'm. I think the last book I got to her a little bit late. Um, by that stage, she was just like, "It's all good." She said, "I'm hardly ever having to do anything." She said, "Your writing is just down pat now." So she said it was there's just little grammatical things. So um, she said, "Yeah." So that that That's was great. it was good to be able to. But yeah, if I hadn't had her, then it, it probably wouldn't have flowed as quickly. That's important. That's that's a great mm -hmm. takeaway is, is finding a good editor to work with, mm -hmm. and you know people's definitions of editing are are different. <laughs> whereas you just need a copy editor, and you're a great writer. I need more of a content editor <laughs> where they can restructure sentences and they can get in there and really, really make it better. But I like mm -hmm. I like getting my thoughts out and then saying, "Hey, make this a lot better. Say yeah. this in the way that I that I'm thinking, but I can't quite say it on the page." So. Yeah. I guess that's a good lesson for people listening right now is draw out those distinctions. But regardless, a good editor is a, is a key asset in this whole process so mm -hmm. that you can have someone to pass it off to and make your work a lot better. Exactly. Now, what about since this seven books in seven weeks, what have books been like since then? Cause you've seen kind of the other extreme. So what has it been like since? So I took two months off from writing. I just, I physically like, and mentally just had to do that because I was at the end of that process. I was like, okay, I'm actually overwriting, which was a little bit tricky because I still had blog posts to write. <laughs> I still had to do that sort of process. But I kind of needed to just, I don't know, debrief and just kind of step back. And I did, like it was just, but I found that probably after two weeks, it's like, I think I might be ready to write another book. No, you need to. And my husband was like, no, you need to take like a month. And I'm like, oh, but I really, I've got all these ideas. And so how I kind of combated that is that I went, okay, I'll, I'll do some co-authoring projects. So I, that's what I did. I co-authored um, a book that just came out this week and I'm co-authoring another book at the moment. So that kind of, eased me back in and I found that process um, to go really well. But now after this next co-authoring book, I'm like, I'm chomping at the bit to just write all those other books. And, you know, there's like 30 books just kind of shouting at me from the wall. So <laughs> <laughs> you've got all <laughs> books shouting. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> so it's, uh, I, I, I really like that is, you know, taking some time off because then your urge to get back at it is yeah. is a lot higher. So, mm -hmm. but I am curious, I'm going to take a step back here a little bit between this, you know, writing these books solo and mm -hmm. writing during the seven week writing challenge. 
How, and, and then even now to co-authoring, how has your writing process changed or what are the differences there? Now I know that I can write a lot, like I can, I'm writing even faster. Like I just find that the process is easier and easier the more that I do it. And the co-authoring process, it's so, it's, um, it's so interesting when I'm, both the people that I've worked with had, haven't written a book before. So, you know, my first co-author, co-author Mike, you know, went through the process and it was so interesting to see his chapters compared to mine. So really, like, really long, like, you put loads and loads of stuff, whereas I now am, you know, I'm straight to the point, no fluff, just literally write how I talk. And so, you know, I went back to Mike and I said, okay, this is awesome content, but it's need to pare it down and just, just write how you how you would talk to someone just you know have have a conversation it doesn't need to be a, a tome of information so it was that part of the process now I think is what I I enjoy writing for, so for me it's I love doing it so but I found that yeah that whole process now is much easier and I found I have a very distinct voice now and so I, that's why I just run with it's conversational it's not academic or anything like that and that's fine because every the feedback that I get from people who read my book, that's what they say. They're like, I really like the conversational tone because otherwise it's not, why would you read in like nonfiction can be boring. So I always try to make especially like topics like freelancing interesting because that's how I talk. So <laughs> I wish I could add my accent in there because I know that people would probably, <laughs> I need to do some audio books. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Because there's all kinds of funny pronunciations and, <laughs> yes, and words that we talk about all the time. <laughs> um, is it is it crazy for you to think about the fact that maybe ten months ago or so you were starting your first real book yep. project? It really is, and you know I've had all of my books turned into paperback as well. Because for me, I was like, I want that physical book as well. Like I have my iPad and all my books are loaded on my Kindle, but having the physical book as well is just like, I'm an author. Like, you know, it's real. And, you know, every time mom and dad come to visit, I'll bring out my next, like my newest book. I'm like, look, dad, there's my newest book. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, that's really nice. <laughs> I have no idea. Like, it's, it's so funny. But I just, I, like, I just love that process. And, you know, that's stuff that I've done that I've made. And I'm like, I'm, it makes me really proud to be able to, have that and yeah to think 10 months ago I, was, I didn't have any of that it's just it's crazy to think how fast that has happened now what's been the coolest part of that experience I mean being able to show your parents a book and something you create <laughs> that's obviously really cool and I remember that yeah. experience for myself of in our case one of our books was about our parents and all the awesome stuff they taught us and that was just a, that was like our Christmas gift to them <laughs> priceless priceless gift but what, what are some other cool experiences or just takeaways or wins, just cool things that have happened as a result mm-hmm. of all this progress you've made over the last 10 months? Hearing from people that I don't know, people that just, you know, email you and go, you know, I really loved your book. Because I think the other thing that I've realized is in this process is that you can get kind of, for me anyway, I can get kind of caught up in, the writing and not really thinking about the impact that it has on somebody else. So for me, I'm just like, cool, yeah, I've written this book, cool, and I'm working on the next one. It's neat to be able to kind of step back and reflect on a book that you've just published. And then when you hear from other people that it actually makes a difference, that's cool. Like I find that that is probably the best part is actually making a difference in somebody else's life because I'm, I am not writing crappy stuff just for the hell of writing I'm writing about stuff that I care about and I want people who read it to kind of get that feeling that I that I'm that I care about what I'm writing Um, so I think that's the really cool thing and then you know I'm just randomly um, you know appearing on podcasts and and stuff like that like just would never you know here I am in Auckland New Zealand like it's just it's crazy yeah so it's the cool stuff what are some of the unexpected opportunities that have happened as a result of of these books? Getting to coach in self-publishing school. <laughs> oh. 
being being here, like talking to you. Um, you know, I on Nick Loper's um, recent podcast, like just just completely left field. I think the fact that I had side hustle blueprints, though, I think I said to Nick, I was like, really should have grabbed that one. That was would have been a really good branding. Right? <laughs> <Wow>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So just really cool stuff like that and just having the opportunity to meet and talk to people in just in other locations and we got to meet up when you were traveling down here so it's just there's just really cool connections everywhere yeah that was that was so cool to get to that was a cool experience for me to get to see you know someone all the way around the world auckland new zealand who because of this program because of this stuff online um mm -hmm you know, having all the success with books and actually getting to meet in person and ride Vespa scooters around <laughs> yeah. and go to wineries. Well, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was your first time ever riding and then you got to meet my whole family, which is probably more than you could bargain for. <laughs> yeah. And the crazy, the crazy, crazy family. And that, yeah. that that's the cool part. And speaking of family, like what does your family think of all this? What do your friends think of all this? To be honest, I don't think a lot of like my, my mum and dad are cool. They follow everything. They listen to all podcasts, everything like that. But you know, I'm the oldest of five kids, and none of my siblings are. Uh, they're just like, oh yeah, Lisa's. She's always doing something different. Like it's whatever. And and my friends are kind of the same. Like they're all just kind of like, that's cool. Uh, but I don't think any of them have read any of my books or fully understand really what it is that I do and what I've done to get to where I am. So make, meeting friends around the world and making connections outside of immediate friends and family because they don't, friends and family just don't always understand what it is that you're doing, particularly when you're doing something that's outside the, you know, the norm. So that's 100%. been cool. Yeah, that's what I've loved is being able to connect with others that want to do the same sort of things that I'm doing because friends and family are awesome but again, they don't always understand what it is that you do, and which is cool. That's okay, because then you just meet more friends along the way. And, and, and I know that sometimes friends and family can actually be a burden on those dreams and actually can, can wear you down. And why are you doing this? Why are you spending all your time writing these books? Seven mm -hmm. books in seven weeks. That's a stupid idea. <laughs> like, you know, all these things that can just chip away at your dream. So yeah. how is how is making those relationships and online relationships and things like that, how has that helped you get through this process? Well, so, I mean, to be honest, my friends and family are, have always been really supportive. They just haven't always understood. So mm -hmm. from that perspective, I'm really lucky. Like my husband's super supportive um, and my family are as well. But, you know, when you're, I work from home, I don't have anyone to talk to on a day-to-day -day basis around me. Like I can't just go meet someone for a coffee. So being able to be able to, you know, chat on a Google Hangout, jump on Skype with someone, that's what I value is being able to to chat to people and, and just, you know, bounce ideas off and, and talk about the stuff that we're doing on a day to day basis. Yeah, the that's stuff cool. that the stuff that everyone else looks at you when you explain it and they just glaze uh, over. Yeah, just exactly. Like, yeah, that sounds cool. That sounds, <laughs> exactly. Or when you're having a rough day, that sounds really tough. Yeah, no. Nice. <laughs> you know, they just have no clue what's actually Yeah, happening. like when the internet's not working, or like I get really upset and everyone's just like, you're working from home. I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> so you just sound like a diva right now. Yeah, really? exactly. The Wi-Fi, you're going to complain about the Wi-Fi. And you're like, I run an online business. This is I literally the only thing in my world that matters. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's great. <laughs> now, before we wrap up and before we run, what would be a parting tip, parting piece of advice for people thinking about writing their first book? Do it. Don't, don't overthink it. Don't spend too much time in here talking yourself out of it. I just, I love the whole done is better than perfect and taking imperfect action nothing has to be perfect and particularly when you're public you know self-publishing and publishing online anything can be changed so if you see something that needs tweaking you just upload a new file like that's that's what i love is the ability to continually improve on something that you've already done so done is better than perfect that's my key takeaway 
Awesome. And before we run, how can people find out more information about you and your books? So you can check out my books on lisacartwright.com um, or just Google me on Amazon. <laughs> Does that sound right? Google me on Amazon. <laughs> search, search me on Amazon. Google has weaved its way into Oh, it. wow. That is next <laughs> level. Next level. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Lise, thank you so much. It's It's been awesome seeing you grow ever since joining Self-Publishing School and, and beyond. And, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's coaching, whether it's writing all these books, giving back, and then also taking the information and running with it. Like, it's been amazing seeing your, your story develop and also seeing all the success. And we're really, really happy for you. And I just can't wait to see what else is, is coming up. So thanks for coming on and sharing those lessons and everything that you've learned throughout this whole journey. Mm, thank you so much. It's been awesome. Awesome. Well, talk to you soon.